Has anyone here ever struggled with what they should sell? Yeah. That question haunted me for years, right? And I would walk around, I would say, what do I sell, what do I sell? And it kind of became a whip. I, don't, I mean, it shouldn't have been, but it was. And I'm, what do I sell, what do I sell, what do I sell? Now, that guy could figure out what to sell. That guy could figure out, why can't I figure out what to sell? In fact, I know what to do with it once I have it, but what is it, right? And it became this, this very painful thing for me. Um, it wasn't until I changed the question that everything else actually started falling in place. And this was the question. Because um, I'm a huge believer that questions invite revelation. No matter what you ask, you will get the answer. You may not like it, but you get the answer. Therefore, what you ask needs to be very intentful. So I started changing the question. And the question was, who do I want to serve? Who do I want to sell? Okay, And then what... I'm sorry, how much do I want to get paid for that? You know, there's been a lot of times where uh, we would create an offer at ClickFunnels and we'd, you know, we'd have a, a huge event coming up or, or we'd create a lot of campaigns around stuff and people would be showing up and Russell and I would be like, okay, what should we sell? Like the night before. <laughs> and it was always fascinating to me. I thought the way you chose price was based on some like, you know, formula, some algorithm, Something like that. And there's some like guidelines around it. But he, no joke, would stand up and go, you know what? I want to get paid 12 grand for that. That's how he shows price. He said, I'm not, wor I'm not, he's like, I'm not even willing to get out of bed for that solution because it's good until someone pays that much money. Or like with his inner circle, he's like, you know what? It's got to be 50 grand now. There's just there's so many other things that cause my time, so many things that I need to put my time to. That for me, it's not worth it. So how many of you guys know what you want to get paid? You just said how much your financial goal is. But if the actual product, one of the things that I've found is that people will sit back and they think, well, this is what everyone else is charging, therefore I must also blank. Just choosing a higher price is one of the easiest ways to gain attention. Can you believe that guy? Look how much he's charging, right? You know what I mean? And suddenly it's like free eyeballs, right? And just... Choose how much you want to get paid. Just choose it. Just boop, this is how much I want to get paid. Okay? This is how much I'm willing, uh, at that price level, I'm now willing to fulfill that. Does that make sense? Anyone else, did anyone just give themselves a raise? <laughs> yeah. who, who just went up in their price points? I can't remember who it was, but they said, like, you can literally increase your price by 10% and lose, like, 10% of your customers, and you're still going to make more money. <laughs> it just, they're going to pay it. Okay, just, just increase your price. And uh, you'll be shocked how many people actually not only pay it, but how much a more willing and able and um, progressive customer you actually attract to you, okay, by charging more. When I got really, really serious on who I want to sell and what price point I'm willing to get out of bed for, not that I hang out in bed, but you know what I mean, <laughs> so I don't, okay, that's when I figured out what I should sell is actually from the customer. And the mistake I was making was that I was like, well, what do I sell? What do I, I need this prolific idea. College told me to do this. I need this prolific idea on what to sell. I'm not the one buying it. I shouldn't be asking me, <laughs> right? And that was the big issue. I gotta turn around and instead say, who do I wanna sell? sell? Who do I wanna serve? Who do I wanna spend time with? I love hanging out with you guys. You know what's funny is at Funnel Hacking Live, I totally get stressed out now. <laughs> Because I get stalked and followed all over the place. <laughs> Around you guys, I'm like, I feel totally calm. I'm like, because you're my people, man. Like, I love hanging out with you. But I won't go to Funnel Hacking Live without a bodyguard anymore. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it's good to be here. I'm glad you guys are all here. <laughs> okay. But that's, it's a testament to what I'm telling you, though. What I sat back and said is, who do I want to serve? And then the rest of it kind of falls in place. So we're actually going to focus on the who uh, right here. Who do I want my customer to be? Um, there was a, uh, a lady that reached out. Some of you guys have heard this story. It's probably a year and a half ago. Steven, I'm looking at your product right now. What ROI can you guarantee me? I was like, what? Huh? Quote. <laughs> and, uh, she goes like, if I bought it, how much will you guarantee that I make? I was like, what are you talking about? nothing. I don't know you at all, right? And even if I did, I'm not responsible for your success. Ouchie. This program probably isn't for a uh, good fit for you. And that's what I told her. She goes, are you serious? I was like, yeppers. 
<laughs> you fired, right? I fired her, right? You can do that. You don't, the customer is not always right. I, whoever said that got straight A's in school and they have never made a dollar, okay? That is a dumb statement, dumb statement. The customer is not always right, okay? You are providing a solution there. It's an exchange. You don't have to bleed for them and be always on call for them. You know what I mean? And so many times where I, the world I came from or the general advertising and traditional entrepreneurship space is very much with that. Like you'd get an A on a paper, the customer is always right. Like ended up with that, you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? Okay, the way I bring somebody into my product greatly determines, okay, uh, uh, what they do with it and their success rate post-purchase. If I have to beg my way through the sale, I will beg my way through their using it. The way that you bring, the way you bring them into your product greatly determines your relationship with them afterwards. Greatly pre-stages what they're gonna expect from you as well. If I have to beg, I will beg in fulfillment. Okay, that's why I, if she's already asking that, you're not a good fit for this. I don't care if you have the money. That's not a qualifier for me anymore. Hey, I don't care if you have the money. That's what I'm talking about. You fool it. okay. <laughs> Um, I am not the funnel. That's the reason why. You're not the funnel. I'm not the funnel. I'm not, if, if, what I do is I set up a sales system or a funnel and then I step back and I watch it and I, I, I don't fall in love with my baby, right? And I look at it like, oh man, she's asking that kind of question and this is what happened after that conversation. I went to my team and I said, we got to upgrade our customer a little bit here because... And it's, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be rude. It's just from my eyes and for the type of person that it was going to bring in, they're not in a place in their life where they're probably going to be able to execute what I tell them to do. Therefore, success rate will drop. Everyone's not going to be as happy and it'll make me look like I don't know what I'm doing on this, right? It actually massively affects the success rate of my product. You need massive uh, clarity on the who because I'm not the funnel. You're not the funnel. The funnel's the funnel, right? You're just building it. You're building a sales message and an offer. And if I am highly involved in every single transaction, I'm not like high ticket, I totally get that. They might need a phone call, but even then, I'm not involved with it. I created the system that sells, okay? And I wait for the right who. Customer education um, uh, is the secret to finding your dream 